Hi, this is the gigantic Curvy 3D character tutorial. We've now moved into Blender to prepare our models for the final render. Um, we're going to be finishing off our giant character with um, a material which will give him a sort of demonic skin, red and black splotchy skin. Um, here's our scene in Blender. Currently it's all set with the default white material. Um, I'm selecting all of the objects and I'm going to give them a, a darker default material. I'll just take off the old material, add a new one, and set it to a dark grey. Then it's and then press Control L and select materials to copy the selected object's material onto everything else. I'm um, just going to turn back on my lights. Now we have quite a dark scene. So this time we're going to be focusing on the the skin. I'm just going to yeah, select in on the skin. And the skin's going to be shared by the, the torso and the head. So I'm going to set up a um, new material on one of those. I'll just isolate by hiding the collections I don't need. I'm also swapping to Eevee because it's, it's quicker to get updates when I'm editing my materials in Eevee than Cycles. I'm just setting up my views ready to do some materials work. Just having a, a view on the right to see what it's looking like and a view on the left for my um, for my node network. So we've created a new material called Giant Skin and we'll just select that for the head as well. There we go, a good preview. Now the main idea for this skin is that I'm going to have two materials and I'm going to blend between them using uh, a noise texture. So here's my first material. And there's my noise texture. Just to visualize that, I'm dragging the color to the surface. Um, so you can either use the color or the fac, the factor. It's a very subtle shade at the moment. Um, dragging in the geometry position to get a better um, coordinate for the noise generator. And now I can play with the scale and the and the the detail of that noise texture. So chucking in a brightness contrast, I want quite defined black and white areas for this texture. So by fiddling with the the contrast and brightness, I can change the size of those areas. I'm just changing the scale until I get a nice distribution. Okay, I'm pretty happy with my my noise noise texture, which is going to blend between these two things. Now I need to duplicate the material so I can set up two materials. Um, just set them with different colours to start off with, so we can see what's going on clearly. Um, now I'm looking for the, the mix shader, which will blend these two shaders together. So joining the output to the surface, the, the 
the output of our noise to the factor and the shader input the shader inputs to each of the, sh the shader inputs on the on the mix shader and now you can see on the right that these two materials the red and the blue material are now mixed together over the surface of the model now we want to get some more detail and make them the the two materials closer to what we want to end up with so i'm going to use a Veroni texture this will give us a sort of bobbled look which is almost a bit like a scaly skin i'm going to reuse the geometry position as an input to that and again i'm just going to chuck that into the output to see what it looks like in a sort of raw format just try out the different settings i think i was quite happy with the default and filling the scale Yep, I want them quite randomly distributed. And now I'm going to throw that into a bump map. Once I find the bump map again. Ah, I want to invert it first. So I'm going to make a color ramp and change the ends to white and black in the other order. That means that the spots will be light and the rest of it will be darker. Now I can chuck it into a bump map. Which is under vector. So chuck the color into height and the normal into that shade as normal. And we can see a, a very strong bumpy texture all over the, the skin. Um, want to reduce the, the power of that quite a lot so it's more subtle just going to tweak the the skin so it's going to be a bit shinier again to contrast with uh, our blue material which will be a more dull ashy sort of burnt texture So you can get a lot of different looks just by playing with the specular and the roughness of the surface. And with Eevee you can edit all these things in real time and see how it updates. Okay, now I'm going to focus on the blue material. Um, again, I'm going to use some noise to give it a rough look. I'm going to use the geometry position as an input to that noise. I'm just going to duplicate the bump, shift D, and see how that looks. So this gives us a rough a rough look but it's a bit simplistic um, so it needs some more detail can change the scale of the noise if you're making a, a high resolution image you want lots of um, fine detail as well so you might want to zoom in on the the model to make sure you've got enough fine detail so this one's going to have quite a dull look but rather than just take off the specular entirely, I'm, I'm making it a very rough, rough surface and a dark grey. Things can look a bit too matte if you turn off the specular entirely. Let's try it with the blend between the two. Now, the grey bits have turned blue. Um, this is because the 
the mix shader is actually using a negative value because we increase the brightness contrast so much some of that range is going negative um, and it's going a negative away from red so far it's turning sort of bluey green if we clamp that between 0 and 1 then um, the lowest value will be 0 and it'll go down to a, a, the grey value Okay, that's almost right now. I'm going to change the the size of the different areas by changing the brightness on the noise texture. Again, you can play with these quite a lot. I think this was the most complicated shader I, I used on this illustration. Um, my final one had a, an ambient occlusion node as well. Um, you could add all sorts of subtle colour variations and whatever, all without having to paint a texture map, which is quite nice. For simpler parts, for, for instance this, this arm bracer, I'll just chuck up the metallic slider, um, fiddle with the roughness, and that's almost done. Um, that'll look better when there's an environment for it to reflect off. Similarly for the, the horns, very simple changes. Uh, I'll just increase the specular, decrease the roughness to give them a sort of shiny, shiny ivory look. Again, you could add a, a noise texture with a bit of um, distortion to the, the geometry position to make it a sort of slightly streaky effect on the ivory. Now finally, once I'm almost done with the materials, I switch to the Cycles renderer. Um, I like the, the soft lighting and reflections you get from Cycles. And that's what I'll be using for my final render. And I can have another look at how, how the material works in the rest of the scene. So if I need to tweak something at this stage, it'll take a couple of seconds to update in the view. Um, but still a lot quicker than redoing an entire render. Um, my, my full size renders, several thousand by several thousand, um, take at least an hour to render. So you don't want to do too many of those while you're making a project. I'll usually just chuck one on overnight and forget about it and come back in the morning to see bits I need to change. Towards the end of a project uh, I'll, I'll see things which I need to fix and then I'll just render out a small region and paste that in on top. Um, which you can do with view, view regions in Blender. Um, the other thing you can do is render out in layers. So I'm going to set the display film to transparent so when I render this out now um, I'll be able to paste it into an image editor and it'll already have a transparent background so I can layer it with other parts of the illustration um, I did this with the trees the different characters um, trees in front of the, the giant trees behind the giant um, so I could stack up different layers um, and fiddle with the the fog, the aerial perspective, and such. Then, um, yeah, then when it's ready to render, I let it go. Um, I'm using quite low render settings here. Uh, but for the, yeah, as I say, for the final image, it'll take too long to watch. And that's the giant almost finished. Um, there's been fairly epic series. Thank you if you've watched from the beginning and you've got all the way here. Um, we have one more episode to go. 
and I look forward to seeing you in the last part of the Gigantic series. <laughs>